thank you everybody for being there. Thank you organizers for this great Java day in Kyiv. Very nice place and very nice language. <laughs> so today we are going to talk to father of Java, James Gosling. <laughs> James, thank you very much that you agreed to talk to us in live mode. Of course, we wish you to talk in person, but we understand it's not easy to travel so many, to do so many travels. So yeah, we are happy to, to talk to you. Job. Yeah, so, and today we are going to do some kind of live discussion. I will ask you questions, and we expect to get, like, real answers, awesome. real answers. <laughs> So um, what we did, um, we published an announcement about uh, like live speech with James Gosling, and we asked the community to suggest questions for this talk and to vote for these questions. And we got like four questions from the community. And uh, so let's go and ask each of them. So the first question. What would you change in Java if you were to create it again? Um, uh, I'd probably get rid of the Java AWT event model right away. Um, I mean, the, you know, you know the, 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 the set of things that I felt that were missing early on, you know, a lot of them have been addressed already. And, and really what I wished is that, is that some of these things could have happened a lot sooner. You know, things like, thing, things like, like generics and lambdas. But the hard thing for all of them was that, you know, they've been an open research question for a very long time. And, um, you know, if, if I had just implemented any of the, of the sort of thoughts I had about either of those really early on, it it would have been a lot less um, interesting than the than the implementation that's there now. Okay, good. But there are a few things like like um, I generally like operator overloading, even though the there's a fairly strong current in the community that just hates operator overloading, uh, and the usual issue with operator overloading is it's so easy to abuse. I mean, it's, 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 you can find everywhere, you know, people that build list implementations where they've overloaded plus equals to mean list insertion. And that really pisses some people off. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's sort of the, 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 the tragedy of having a large, a large user base that they're just a lot of opinions. Okay, I see. So, great. Uh, let me ask our audience, do you hear James okay? Okay, great, thank you. So, thank you for this one. Let's go to the next one. What do you think about current direction of Java evolving? Um, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy. I mean, the, 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 the engineers that are leading it, you know, in particular Brian Getz, are doing a really good job. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the jigsaw stuff that's coming up, fairly soon and you know I've been talking to, to, to Brian now and then about his work on on value types and value types is something that I've wanted for a really really long time but I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it and do it sort of efficiently and to do what you what you would really like it to do and it's really hard and you know I couldn't figure out a good way to do it and uh, Last year, when 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 Brian told me he was he was taking a stab at it again, um, he, he you know I sort of I sort of laughed and I and, and I said you know there there are at least half a dozen PhD theses in doing value types right, and um, just a, just two or three weeks ago, um, I I. I I talked to him again, and, and 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 he said, you know, that he was really, really annoyed at me because he, you know, when when we had that earlier conversation, he thought he he, 
he, he thought I was like being overly dramatic and that there was only like one or two PhD theses in it. And, and he, he, he's, he's concluded that I'm, that I was right. Um, it's really hard. I mean, there's so many PhD theses in doing it and it seems like a really simple thing. Um, but there is so much detail in there, especially in, 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 in getting it so that you get the, the performance that you really want. I see. Okay, good. Thank you. So from my point of view, I would love to see more movements. I mean, more improvements related to the cloud. So as you know, like early, we did. Not yeah, but that's, that, that, that's largely going to be library stuff. Yep. You know, and, um, you know, the, 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 the library has been, has been, uh, moving a lot and it's really hard to tell you know, what the boundaries of the library are because there are so crazy many um, Java libraries out there. I mean, lately I've been, you know, the, the, the cloud library that I've been using the most heavily has been Zookeeper. Um, and it's, it's pretty wonderful. But you can find all kinds of them around. Yeah. yeah, but from other point of view, it's good that we have so many libraries. So we have power of choice. So we can choose what we love, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 it, it's good and bad. Um, <laughs> I agree. You know, because in, in 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 a number of other systems, there's like one way to do things, and in Java, there's usually five or six ways. And and you start reading all the arguments and all the websites about why, you know, this library is better than that library, and you go, well, okay, I buy that argument or I don't buy that argument, and. Um, you know, do you try to figure out who, you know, which one's got the widest adoption, which one's got the, the most people working on it? Um, you know, in the case of Zookeeper, you know, the, the number of giant websites that are dependent on it is just huge. Yeah. You know, so you can feel pretty confident that it's incredibly reliable. I mean, it's, it's underneath Netflix, for example, and, um, and, and all of Hadoop and a bunch of other systems. And, you know, I, I have never detected a bug in it. And, you know, so that one in particular is just really, really solid. Um, but there's all these other kinds of libraries that are just great. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> so next one. What next step in programming do you think that IT world should take? Um, in programming? for the IT world. Um, I mean, most of the IT world shouldn't be programming, <laughs> at least for the, the, the people who would call themselves an IT guy or an IT person. Um, you know, in some sense, the, uh, you know, one of the jobs for, 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 for software developers should be that the, that the folks in IT should just have to, you know, configure stuff and turn things on and off and, um, you know, run their systems. Um, you know, the, the system should be easy enough that IT folks don't have to actually program anything. And, you know, the, the amount of, you know, crazy scripting that you find IT folks doing gets kind of out of control. Um, and, and it just, 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 just sort of speaks to how to, empty some of the, the, the basic systems are. I mean, the, the way that um, IT folks tend to approach reliability by, um, you know, by, 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 by building lots of shell scripts that, that, that poke and prod all over the place. And sure, there are lots of tools that people use to manage stuff like, like the reliability of a, of a cloud. Um, you know, they're, they, 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 they still make life too hard for IT folk. Yeah. Okay, I agree. So it's about distribution, distributed systems, about the cloud, so to make the life with cloud easier, like with distribution and reliability. So, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Next one. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, have you ever left Easter egg in your program? <laughs> Especially in Java or GVM. <laughs> um, Have you ever thought about this? <laughs> I've certainly thought about it. Um, 
you know, I didn't leave any in Java or the JVM. Um, and it depends on what you call an Easter egg. Um, I think my, my, my favorite one was a, uh, an April Fool's joke that I did that um, through somewhat nefarious means got distributed to the desktops of all employees at Sun Microsystems. And on the morning of April 1st, it started running. And uh, what it would do is, is it would take over your screen, uh, overlay the image of two eyeballs that were kind of bloodshot one of them would wink, and then they'd just go away. So it would just have to go. <laughs> and, and, and it would do that kind of randomly every 20 or 30 minutes throughout the day. And then it just, just sort of stopped. And there are a whole lot of folks that, 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 that spend a bunch of time to figuring out how the Internet worm worked. Um, but it was, it was much simpler than they expected. But that was, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we uh, all have fun. <laughs> okay, next one. So next one from me. Uh, what is the main advantage of Java compared to other technologies from your point of view? I mean, to other languages from your point of view? Um, I, well, in some sense, the, the main advantage is that there isn't a main advantage. Um, there's like, like half a dozen of them. You know, there, there are things like, um, you know, the integrity of the memory model. You know, the fact that pointers can't leak or be corrupted. You know, there's no way that you can cast a pointer and lie about what it is. So that you can always have faith that an object is what you think it is. And that's, that's one, that turns out to be one of the key parts in, for instance, making garbage collection really work. It's what's really underneath the, the security model. Um, things like the, you know, there are many things in the language that are about building large scale systems. You know, the things like the, 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 the strong type system um, you know, various people find, you know, the, the, the big advantage of a, a, like a scripting language is that you don't have to type in any types, you know, so they're, they're very grumpy about typing INT, but they're really happy to type VAR. And, and why that's better, I don't know. Um, why they think that's better, I don't know. But the, once you've got a strong type system, you get a whole lot of advantages like the compiler is able to check things before you run them. Um, there's, there's so much analysis that a compiler can do or that an IDE can do um, that, that find all kinds of latent bugs before you even run your code. You know, having the, um, the type system go sort of beyond a method into, into, into classes and interfaces allows all kinds of large scale analysis. Um, you know, and there's there's all this stuff about um, how that 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 then sort of overflows into advantages in performance. You know, so so if you look at what, for example, the 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 the, the hotspot VM is able to do, uh, you get just tremendous performance out of out out of the the fact that you've got this type system on on which you can do some analysis. You know, a lot of the, 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 the scripting languages, they just, you know, it's it, all the attempts to compile them have a hard time getting around the lack of a type system. Um, even uh, the, the really hot ones like the one in, in Chrome, they do that by sort of faking a type system under the, under the sheets and, and just hoping that you stick within it. And, and still they don't get up to the, the performance levels of, of Java and really, you know, one of the things that I was trying to do early on was to, to see how close I could get to the performance of C um, and at the same time how, how close I could get to the sort of fluid, safe feeling of a, of a scripting language. Um, you know, in, in C, one of the problems that, 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 that you always have is that when when things fail, they tend to fail mysteriously. 
you know, you'll have a, a pointer that goes off the end of an array or, you know, you're, 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 you, you've written a routine that expects to get, you know, a certain format of image and somebody hands you, uh, you know, the wrong data type. And that just can't happen in, in, in Java, but it's really easy to do um, in C. And, and so you get this, the, the, this much, much sort of safer feeling in that, you know, when an error happens, it's a lot closer to the actual source of the error rather than, you know, what happens in, 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 in a language like C or C++ where you just sort of mysteriously, where you just sort of go off the end of an array, the, the piece of code that, that, that caused the problem doesn't actually see the problem and it's not until you know, a lot later when you find that the, 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 that a malloc header has been corrupted, uh, that the world has been blown away. And to try to wind that back and f find out, you know, what actually did the corruption can be really tough. Um, and, 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 and so it has, um, I mean, it's just a pile of things. Okay, good. Thank you. So let Thank me add a couple so advantages that I love personally. Actually, at early days, uh, we had a lot of Spark platforms and uh, Intel platforms, and it was hard to, you know, like, program for them, like, on one language. And I figure out, okay, there is a Java, and you can write once, and you can, you can run it anywhere. Like, so it was really good for, for us. Like, so it speed up, speeded up development. So we started to utilize, actually, Spark platforms that we had. So that was, that was like, the one that I like the most. And another one that I found later, it's like JavaScripting, when you can just write on different languages, even on PHP, and run the scripts on top of Java. So I love these technologies very much. Yeah, but there are many of them, as you mentioned, yep. Good, thank you. Uh, next one, <clears throat> what are you missing in Java today, so? Uh, from the language? Yeah, from language point of view. Oh, there, you know, I've, I've I've had this 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 sort of list of of, of tweaks that I would like to do. Um, you know, there's a form of declaration and assignment that would actually get rid of most declarations. Um, the, that uses type inferencing, where you say something like, you know, instead of saying a equals five, you say a colon equals five, and that's that's sort of a declare and assign, and it uses type inferencing to to figure out the type. Um, you know, that would just, just, just make things tighter. Um, you know, I still miss the, the inspect statement from, from Simula, which is sort of a, a, a case on types. Um, I still miss operator overloading. Um, but, you know, there are really good arguments for why operator overloading is a bad idea. Um, I'm, I'm one of the few people around who does math. Um, you know, and, and, and I've got a lot of, lot of hunks of like spherical trig that just look awful because you have to do, you know, you have to do it with, with, with method calls. Um, yeah. Yep. So James, tell us like, can you influence like Java roadmap today? Like, so can you tell like community guys, like this is an amazing idea, let's make it like, so. Um, Java has never been a dictatorship. Um, I'm not a big believer in that. Um, you know, I was sort of the, the, the grand dictator of Java for about five years. Um, but then as the community started to, 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 to take off, I started doing, you know, other things and, and letting the, the community sort of drive it. And, you know, the, the, the community is a pretty complex bunch of folks because it's, you know, both the, the developers who use it every day, but also a lot of commercial interests. And, you know, where, where it tends to get ugly is when the commercial interests all sort of, um, yep. you know, get hung up on things. And, you know, so, so, so things tend to, you know, when you're running a, a democracy, it's, it's everything goes slower because you have to, like, vote and argue and, and all of that. It's sort of like... Uh, you know, Winston's, Winston Churchill's comment about democracy, that democracy is the worst possible political system except for all the others. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see. So, 
community influence the Java roadmap, like so. And yeah, we have GCP that vote for some features, like, yep. Okay, good. <coughs> Next one. And uh, tell us a little bit about your current job. Why did you decide to work for Liquid Robotics? Um, robots in the ocean? Yep. What could be better? <laughs> right. I mean, I think I've got like one of the one of the very few programming jobs where snorkeling skills are a requirement. <laughs> right. Um, you, you know, I get to go swimming with robots on a regular basis out in a in a marine protected area with 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 tuna and 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 humpback whales, um, and and these robots are just cool. <laughs> and and they they help scientists do amazing things, you know. They 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 get used to, you know, measure the the melting of the ice caps on Greenland. They measure fish populations all over the place. They 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 act as 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 weather stations, um, and they're a really co cool application of Java because we get to. Do you know Java on the robot, Java in the cloud, Java on the desktop, and I have a lot of code that runs in all of them, in all of those places, and um, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, so definitely robotics is interesting area. Yeah, so there are many robots coming into our life. So yeah, it's yeah. Well, it's, well, these ones are, are particularly different because you know a lot of robots people just sort of. Like turn them on and screw around with them, and they and they run for a little while. These things are meant to run for day after day, week after week, month after month. You know, survive hurricanes. Yeah. Um, you know, they're pretty tough critters. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I, I still keep hoping for like a really perfect photo inside a hurricane. I haven't got that yet. Got lots of good photos of icebergs. Um, and you know beaches and things, but um, yeah. yeah. So guys, if you did not know about Liquid Robotics, please check the website. It's a really cool project. Like so, it's like robots are swimming independently in the ocean, like so they can survive in different situations. Yeah, or, or you can look at on my uh, Vimeo site. There's a number of videos. So you go to Vimeo.com/slash James Goslin. Um, there's, there's, there's like literally hundreds of videos there, but most of them are not public, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of customers that just don't want, you know, and, and actually the really annoying customers are the oil companies because they don't want it. They don't want to want anybody to know anything. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to work in robotics, yeah, but it's, there are always annoying customers, so you cannot avoid it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So. Next one, what is the biggest challenge in your current project? Like, what is the biggest, the biggest challenge? challenge? Yeah, but the biggest challenge. Um, what happens if GVM there, goes there's down? There's not enough hours yeah. in the day, right? I mean, we have so much to do and, you know, only so many resources. And, you know, we have all these customers that want really, really really interesting things and yet um they all require some work you know so we you know we we had to do a you know a, some really interesting surveys recently that were pretty nice and and uh, quite a challenge software wise we've um you know we, we always get these strange requests that are always interesting but they're always a science project okay okay good Thank you. So next one, what kind of Java or other technologies um, are you using today? Like Java Enterprise Standard Edition, like what kind of IDE are you using? Like application server database. Can you just name a couple? Like yeah. Ways? So so I, I pretty much live in NetBeans. Okay. Um, you know I like it because of how how integrated it all is. Um, I, I use NetBeans more than email, more than a web browser. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much where I live all day. Um, 
mostly use uh, glass glass fish for the web servers. Um, although uh, on board the robots, we actually run Jetty. Um, and yeah, you know, I've been using um, Zookeeper, like I said. Um, there's a really nice astronomy library that I use called Astrolib. Um, Database. Um, I know you. you know, I'm not a you've... huge database fan. Um, you know, we've got a few places where we use Mongo. Um, you know, mostly stuff ends up as flat files, and oddly enough, I've mostly been using Zookeeper as a bait, as a database. Um, and you know my my favorite way to do databases is to just have have a hash table in ram and you know i i i, I log changes to a flat file um deep persisted you know deep, deep persist from the log into the hash table and you know it is just so much faster than than almost anything else to do it that way <laughs> um, and i don't have the the sort of giant scale issues that most people do um, I don't have a big data problem, but I have a very hard, reliable data problem. So um, I don't have you know, millions or billions of, of, of records that I have to have to search. Um, but what I have is is a is a shore based you know a sort of split shore and onboard control system that has to not crash, and so that causes like to be a little a little a little different okay good thank you so we are not promoting any tool it's just you know asking <laughs> opinion <laughs> so because i know many people have different ideas and so on like even in our company we're using different so yeah okay good thank you yeah no, i'll be absolutely shameless just 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 any if anybody out there is using emacs stop <laughs> it was a really good idea in like 1977. <laughs> but guess what? You know, the 70s are past. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good. So next one, a little bit out of technology. What is your biggest personal dream today? Like, what? Hey. It's 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 it, it, it's 2015, right? It's 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 after the Back to the Future day. So where's my hover conversion kit for my car? <laughs> I see. <laughs> Good. So next one. What is the advice for developers that want to improve their their career? How um, keep learning. <laughs> and it's always easier when you're when it's fun. Um, you know, I do a a lot of a lot of programming just for fun. I mean, uh, you know, and you know, fortunately, my, my my day job is a lot of fun, except for like all the stress from having to have pesky customers. <laughs> uh, you know, but I find that I I sort of you know add features to apps that are. You know the ones that people need, and then there, then I add features to apps that are like the fun ones. Okay, good. So uh, two main things: learn and have fun. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> good, great. So now we are going to ask some questions from the audience, guys. So we have two micro microphones. Uh, please come to microphones and ask your questions. Let's go. So, left one. May I start? Yes. Oh, it's a great honor. So, my question is, could you please share, what do you think about alternative GVM languages? Um, do, you, do you use I mean, any? You know, in general, I, I love the idea that, that, that people are exploring other languages. Um, you know, Java was really cast in the model of, of C++. Um, well, it's sort of Simula and Smalltalk dressed up like C++ to kind of make life 
more comprehensible for people coming from the sea world. But you know, some of the the other popular pro Java lang Java VM languages like like Scala and Clojure um, are really really pretty cool too. Um, and you know, I, I'm personally a big fan of, of functional programming. Um, I mean, I tend to um, write Java code in a very functional style. Um, and you know, Scala is, is, is intended as a very functional language. But the, the tragedy for me with, with Scala is if you go and you sort of troll the internet looking for sample programs, um, you'll find that, 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 that most people use Scala in a non-functional way. Um, so I kind of like, like closure because it, it's really an extreme version of, of enforced functional. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a little hard to wrap your head around. And, you know, after having done a PhD thesis in Lisp, I think I've, you know, burned up my lifetime quota of parentheses. Um, you know, but it's, it's pretty cool. So in general, I'm a big fan. Thanks. Thank you. So right microphone. Uh, hello. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, Java needs to be more friendly to cloud and specifically uh, by usage of uh, different libraries. But um, how about uh, runtime? Um, do you think that uh, making Java runtime more slim, uh, 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 as a result, more friendly to the types of programming like uh, suitable for microservices and containers uh, will make sense. Um, you know the, the 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 slimness of the of the VM. I, I think is is something of a um, a red herring. If you know it, the, it's it's you know the 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 Java VM itself is very good about. Um, you know, if you've got like a, you know, some, you know, a giant set of libraries in your class path, only the things that you really use actually end up taking up any space or time. Um, you know, so while there are, you know, a, a number of efforts to um, slim things down, like, like, the, like the, the, the whole Jigsaw project coming up in, in JDK 9, you know, in terms of, of, of the footprint, uh, you know, it, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't actually change very much. Um, you know, if you're doing things like 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 microservices, they actually work really well in as 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 just sort of regular servlets. You know, where the the, the heavyweightness comes in is 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 when people start using a lot of the really complex libraries for doing things like. You know, in all the different like like template libraries or database libraries or or transactions, um, you know, you you can easily get into a microservices world in Java apps just by not doing complicated things. Um, you know, if you don't use any of the the complicated uh, authentication mechanisms or you know the 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 the. I mean, the, the, the difference between sort of the microservices world and the Java web server world is not so much, um, you know, slimming things down, but what you choose to do, you know, and, and so long as you stay away from the expensive stuff, you know, so like, like the number one thing to do to get your transaction rates up is to not use a database, <laughs> right? You know, as, as soon as you start making, you know, remote calls to remote services, things get pretty expensive pretty fast. Um, and as soon as you do anything that touches a disk drive, things start getting, getting pretty slow pretty fast. But, um, you know, just doing simple services on almost any of the, 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 the web servers, they, they, go, they go pretty fast. Thank you. Okay, let me add a couple of things to this. We have a lot of experience in Java, for Java and cloud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm, just, uh, I'm running out of battery on my laptop. <laughs> okay, so, and we learned a lot of things actually. You know, like, to be honest, Java was not, was not designed for cloud at the beginning. 
you know, and, and it consumes <laughs> a lot of RAM. And I spent about half of a year to figure out how to push RAM back to operation system. It's possible, like, actually, to scale Java vertically. It's possible, and it saves a lot of money for our customers. So, but, you know, we need to do some tricks around it. So I would love to see, like, native implementation of the stuff uh, inside the GVM. An ability, for example, to change like XMX on the fly without restart. So there are many things actually to improve for, for the cloud. Like, yeah, yeah, but you know it's moving. It's moving forward. Uh, I hope we can move it faster. Good. Thank you very much for the great question. Uh, left mi micro. Uh, good morning. Uh, my question is: Did you have a work-life balance when you designed Java? Did you have a free time, I don't know, to sleep, to sit, to eat, to meet your friends, or something else? And if you had, uh, can, you, can we get some advices from you? <laughs> um, I've been horrible on that question. <laughs> um, I tend to go through periods of just, you know, working and sleeping and working and sleeping and you know, I fortunately have a, you know, the, the closest I get to a, uh, to a work-life balance is having a, a wife who is both understanding and very militant. You know, when, when, it's, when it's time to go out and, you know, she will drag me, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll drag me to the movies or drag me out to dinner and, you know, she's, um, she, she gets pretty insistent and she, she, she makes sure, she should have polices my, my work-life balance. Otherwise, I, I just, I'm horrible. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, next one left. Uh, can you hear me Sorry, well? Right. Okay, so first of all, I want to really thank you for being with us today. It's really a great honor and pleasure to see you here and almost shake hands with you. And um, the question I want to ask you is, Basically, what was the hardest problem you have ever solved in your technical life? So like we all know that doing easy stuff and simple stuff is great, but it's really when you pass the Rubicon, when you do something extra, it, it, this is where you reveal your most potential. So what was the moment in your technical life when you passed this Rubicon was the hardest problem you have worked on? Thank you. The hardest problem? Um. God, you know, I mean, I've had so many hard problems. Um, I, I don't know how I'd say that the hardest problem. Um, you know, I think like like the the hardest problem in my in my current job has been how to do um, certain aspects of robot navigation. So. Um, so, so for example, the, the thing that stands out for me on the on the on the on the current robot is that um, the the previous ones were always getting run over by ships, and uh, the current one is really good at getting out of the way, at avoiding collisions, and um, coming up with techniques to do collision avoidance, uh, figuring out how to test that it works doing, you know, thousands of hours of simulations to, to, to test it, coming up with all kinds of weird, weird algorithms, um, making sure that they all work together, making sure that, that all kinds of exceptional situations work. Um, I mean, that, that one was, was really, really hard. Um, the, 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 the design of the Java bytecodes was also like really hard um, getting it so that there was this, this sort of balance between flexibility and the ability to um, compile to very efficient machine code uh, was, 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 really, was really tough. Um, life is boring without hard problems. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you very much. So, left now. It's a great honor to ask you a question. So, my question is, uh, do you write tests 
And how did you test Java? <laughs> do, I write, do I write tests? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty religious about um, writing like, like JUnit test cases. Um, these days I never ever write, you know, like often when, when people will, 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 will test something, they'll, they'll write a, like a little test program, they'll run it against, you know, whatever it is they're working, and then they'll throw the test program away. Um, I never do that. Never ever do that. I always write a JUnit test. Every test I ever do turns into a JUnit unit test that lives on forever. And, you know, when, uh, when an API evolves and the, the test cases start failing, then I always, you know, fix the, fix the test cases. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty freaking religious about test cases. So, guys, we have to write tests. No way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Uh, hi. First of all, I want to say that you just broken one of the myth because I think that to uh, compile always successfully when you compile code and you need to test it. Uh, yes, and um, my question is, uh, we're talking about uh, today a syntax and uh, semantics in Java, Scala, Python, and uh, some languages. So uh, how do you think the Java syntax is too big, uh, too huge, for example, in Scala is too light, and maybe you can some simplify it and have some ideas? It will be not yeah, inter in interesting. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, there, were, there were a number of nice things that were done in Scala to simplify some of the syntax, things like um, the way you can have these, these the declaration parameters in, 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 in classes that, that generate fields and, 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 and properties. And um, there have been lots of, lots of debate about that in the Java community, ways to do that. But um, people really, really like the flexibility in the way that, 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 that accessors are done. Um, Maybe first to remove these entry point like public static void main, just main, right? And that's all? <laughs> it's first step. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, some things are, 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 are well, so, well for, for, for like main, you know, you almost never have main programs except for like student, student assignments. They always have main programs. Um, otherwise, you know, you're, if you're doing like cloud programming, you'll never have a main program. You know, we could do funky syntax to make main different. Um, and in fact, in the very, very early versions of Java, um, the, you know, if you just had a file with statements in it, so it sort of had a read eval print loop. Um, and that was, that was pretty useful, except that you know, after a while, it sort of got in the way of, of checking classes and it let, let a number of errors through. Um, and people were just never using it because it, people were, you know, always defining objects and things that were being run from inside of a framework. Um, you know, and some things are, 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 are kind of verbose just because lots of folks ended up feeling like it's nice to have things be explicit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So left. Hello, my name is Alex. What would you suggest to the ongoing disputes uh, around Java features? Likewise, use checked or unchecked exceptions. Um, you know, they, they have always been, you know, long religious arguments. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of, of using checked exceptions, um, you know, declaring throws all the time, catching it. I mean, I put, you know, try catch statements all over the place. Um, but then again, I'm in, I'm in, in kind of a, a universe where I have to be able to adapt to failures, right? With, with, with most people's code, 
Um, yeah, you know the you know if if a file is missing, it's okay for the thing to go splat. Um, and 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 for me, um, I I like things to just never crash. Um, you know, so I I I I you know always use you know if you look at my code, it's very dense in sort of try catches and and throws statements. Um, and analysis of, of errors because I really try to like to build stuff that is solid. And in my in my current job, you know, the, these robots are like a thousand miles from the nearest human, and um, there's nobody there to to, to to wiggle the wires and and that. So it really has to be it really has to be solid. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, James. I have pure non-technical question at all. Uh, you achieved a lot. You changed the industry. You, thanks to you, for instance, we have job to do right now uh, in some <laughs> way. So, uh, and you are still like working. You're still learning new stuff. You are following the trends. You know the new JVM languages and kind of stuff. Where you find your motivation now? How, what drives you every day? It's fun. <laughs> so, you know, you know, you know. If you're if you're working on stuff that is boring and tedious, stop <laughs> and quit. You know. Thank it's you. A, it's, it's, you know, you can find you can find stuff to work. And, if, and even if you know your day job is boring and tedious, <laughs> find something that's not. That the advice I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah guys. If you don't have a fun at your current job, just quit. Be like so. Well, I mean, life is never quite that easy, right? Because, yeah. you, know, you know, paying your rent and, you know, buying food is actually important. <laughs> yeah. There aren't very many jobs where, you know, software jobs where snorkeling is a, is a job requirement. So, um, <laughs> you know, you have to figure out how to, how to do this, 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 this sort of get the job and have fun balance. I mean, my job is not all fun. You know, my job is it has a lot of you know cranky executives because you know some robot did something odd and they don't understand why and the customer is getting really cranky and yada yada yada. Um, but you know, there's enough sort of fun sprinkled through it that um, you know I, it keeps me motivated. Okay, good, James. One more question from me: Are you hiring Java divers? Today, <laughs> so. um, yeah, we well, we're, we're certainly we're certainly hiring, um, <laughs> but we 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 really want people who are local. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> we're we're a small company, so remote employees are hard. Um, so we're trying to hire people either in in um, either in Sunnyvale or sort of the area around Sunnyvale or. Um, you know, on, on the big island of Hawaii. Yeah, or, or Hawaii, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Next one is left. Yep. Hi. Uh, pre previous speaker actually got the point. I want to thank you that I have my job and I'm standing here. Uh, and my question is about, well, f abstract future. Uh, do you see in the projects like uh, Node.js and similar, a competitor to GVM. And um, can, can there be a chance that someday they will push uh, Java off the road? Well, I mean, a lot of the really cool stuff that people get excited about with a lot of these platforms like, like Node.js is that they, um, they really focus on one small, simple thing. Right, so if you're doing microservices, Node.js works fine. Um, they they get to avoid the performance problems that that JavaScript has by, you know, hiding the, the, those performance issues under the fact that they're 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 dealing with network packets, right? And 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 all of their performance is dominated by by sort of network I/O and you know, Java is this, you know, you can view it as a compromise 
because it's trying to let you do a lot of different things. Um, and, and the thing that the Java does better than anything else is diversity. So if you need an application that's doing um, services up to the web, but they need to be really complex, or services that are spanning many different styles of programming, you know, if you're doing like scientific programming and transaction programming and embedded device programming and desktop, desktop programming, you know, you, you're either learning Java or you're learning a dozen different languages. And, you know, the, the, you know, the, the right once run anywhere slogan can be flipped around. And my, my personal favorite rephrasing of that is learn once, work anywhere. Right. And, you know, when you, when I've talked to a lot of, of, you know, big Java sites like like banks and all of that. You know, one of the big advantages of Java is, you know, you, you can get deep skills in Java and work at all levels of the of the software stack. Um, whereas if you've got like deep skills in JavaScript, you're pretty much doing web pages for the rest of your life. Uh, <laughs> and you're, right. I mean, that's that's kind of the way it is, right? So, so, so if you if you end up with environments that have a lot of different special purpose languages, then then people get very siloed, right? You're sort of stuck in this camp or stuck in that camp, or you have a very shallow knowledge of all of them. I mean, it's really hard to maintain really deep skills in you know half a dozen different languages and it's not the languages that are hard it's 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 like the standard libraries behind them and you know one of the, the the nice things about the jvm languages is that the languages are diverse but they all share the same set of libraries you know you can you know from scala you can you can access any of the java libraries um and, and and so you don't have to relearn that and for me it's the libraries that are the the, the big challenge Thank you for your answer. Thank you very much. Right, microphone. Hello. I have a non-technical, a bit personal question about uh, how did you start your own way in programming? When did you realize that that's the thing you really like? And what were your first steps in programming? Um, so my start in programming was a little odd. Um, I, I, I really like building things. I really like, you know, and I was trying to learn, learn how to do like electronics when I was a kid. Um, but I grew up in a family with no money at all. Um, you know, I couldn't afford to buy transistors and resistors and wire and plugs and all of that. Everything I was doing was out of scavenged parts from, you know, you know, old TV sets that I would pull out of garbage cans. I mean, literally. Um, and then one day when I was 13 or just turned 14, um, a friend of my dad's took me on a, on a tour of the university nearby and they had all these computers in there and I thought this was really, really cool. And, um, the computer center had these locked doors that had combination locks. And I was always kind of a big kid. Uh, you know, I'm six foot three. So when I was like 14, I could kind of look like I was, I was a college student. So I could just kind of hang out and um, watch people, you know, punch the keypad codes. And then I could just, I, I was breaking in. Um, I was getting uh, accounts on the computer systems by dumpster diving and getting people's passwords off of punch cards. Um, taught myself how to do it by just reading stuff in the university library. Um, and, you know, it was, it was just like more fun than, than anything. And then um, 
after about a year of doing that, some folks in the physics department kind of figured out what I was doing and who I was. And um, rather than kicking me out, they offered me a job. So I started, you know, writing um, software for the ISIS-2 satellite, um, you know, and I, and, I, and I did that through most of high school. And I, I skipped a lot of classes when I was in high school. And a lot of my classmates were doing the same and they were mostly doing drugs. And, um, but I was, I was off like, like doing stuff with, with, with the, you know, satellite data analysis and my, my physics and math teachers had figured this out. So, you know, when I didn't show up for class, they were kind of cool with it. So I had a lot of very understanding teachers in, in, in high school and junior high school and, uh, you know, really understanding folks at the university. Um, you know, but it was fun, right? You know, fun is yeah, important. That's very nice. Thanks for your answer. Thank you. So, left one. Hello, James. I've been wondering whether you heard a quote of Andrew Hoare, who said that his invention of null pointer uh, references was a billion dollar mistake, and whether you would agree with him on that. Um, I, I, I think it, on even-numbered days I would agree, and on odd-numbered days I would disagree. Um, you know, I, I, I find myself torn on that point. I mean, it, it makes a lot of things in life uh, much easier, but the, the alternative to a, a null pointer is to ha having um, some kind of a sort of a, uh, I mean, you can view a, a null pointer as a, as a, as a um, sort of a universally available object that just has no methods. Um, and, you know, for a lot of, a lot of types, I end up building empty objects that I use instead of null so that they, you know, when I hit to hit an end of a list, I, I can tell I'm at the end of a list, but it's also an object that behaves properly according to the type contract. Um, but I don't always do that because it's kind of clumsy. Um, you know, so it's, th this feels to me like, like one of those areas in engineering. Um, there's, a, there's a game that's, that, that shows up in a lot of amusement parks. Uh, it's called Whack-A-Mole. Have you ever heard of it? It's a it's a it's a game where there's a there's a board, and and it has nine holes on it. the The board is usually you know about a meter by a meter, and you've got a got a big you're given a big hammer, and a small animal pops his head out of one of the holes, and you hit the animal on the head, and he pops up somewhere else. And then you have to hit that, and then hit that, and then hit that. Um, and no matter how hard you hit, and, you know, and try to get the, the the bowl back into the box, it pops up somewhere else. And so many engineering choices are kind of like that, right? If you you know if you if you realize that there's problems in one area, and you try to fix them, they sort of manifest. The, the, then that causes problems someplace else. And you've got, you don't really have a choice of whether or not to get rid of the problem, but, um, you know, which of the problematic solutions is least awful. And, um, you know, null pointers have, have issues, but then not having null pointers has issues as well. Um, and the ways to work around, you know, avoiding null pointers can be, can be pretty painful. So... Um, I, I, I just don't think there's an easy answer for it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Right. Right. One. One. Uh, hello. <clears throat> uh, we do understand about we should write unit tests, but uh, what about development process? Do you have uh, standard meetings, or maybe you have milestones, sprints, and some kind? other management staff. What should we do? 
<laughs> um, so, I mean, I tend to work in, in vaguely what's, what's called these days an agile methodology. Um, you know, in terms of organizing the engineering process, um, you know, we, we mostly organize things around JIRA. I use 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 Jira the you know the 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 bug database is kind of the, the 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 centralizing theme for how we organize engineering and lots of people do this it's turned out to work pretty well namely Jira represents the things that are are, are like broken or the things that that need to have work and you know you end up doing a debate about a a feature or a fix. You know, on, you know, rather than an email, you do it in comments on the bug, so that the that the whole thread of the discussion is centralized there. Um, whoever it's assigned to starts doing work. Um, you can, you, you know, I use we use the label features and stuff to sort of try to categorize. When, when, when people come up with ideas, you know, that this this thing needs that feature, you've got to decide: do we do that? sooner or later and you end up um, having to decide sort of which release it goes into and um, we tend to do and I, and I like the I really like the style of doing sort of a, a, a hierarchy of releases you know so, so we use um, Jenkins to do all of our builds we have a you know, fairly extensive build factory set up um, so that whenever you do a do a check in to the to the um, base repository, you know it's it it it, it, it fires off the build factory. So we generate build, you know, many times a day. You know, we 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 we're really doing full software releases many times a day, and then um, there's sort of a QA process to, to sort of promote them with FCS. Um, and, and and for us, the, the sort of final release process is probably more difficult than it is for any of you because, um, you know, we really, really have to release software that doesn't break because these are, these are going on to customer vehicles and, you know, that the, the vehicles will be, you know, hundreds of miles offshore and debugging uh, a, a broken piece of software on a robot 100 miles offshore where you can really get to it on a satellite link is really, really hard. So we have to have nailed everything long before it gets there. Um, so, so, yeah, we do um, you know, stand-up meetings all the time. With it. We actually often don't stand up, stand up because we're, you know, in a, um, it's sort of a cube farm. So rather than a stand-up meeting, we just yell, um, and and we mostly debate things on Jira rather than at, at, at meetings. Um, so we actually almost never have meetings. At least that have to do with the software development process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good morning, and uh, first of all, thank you for this honor to ask you a question. And I would like to ask you, have you ever had a situation when you uh, were in the moment of burning out and when you had an idea to give up at all programming? And could you give some suggestions for these cases? Um, I, I certainly suffer job burnout on a regular basis. Um, it's never been such that I wanted to um, quit programming. Um, but, you know, I've, 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 you know, I've certainly, you know, bought myself a plane ticket to a place with a beach and just gone and laid out there. Um, one of the really nice things at Sun Microsystems in the very early days was that there was this sort of unwritten policy that if if somebody was really killing themselves to get a release done, you know the you know you know often when you're doing a, a release of a big project, there's 
there there are one or two people who are kind of the 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 leads in putting all the pieces together, making sure that all the 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 the, the testing and the engineering and that is all coordinated. And you end up working like 16 hours a day and sleeping under your desk. And, and if you've done that for too long, you, you know, you're a mess. And, 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 and so at Sun, we, we, um, we would, you know, hand these people, a, you know, plane tickets to some place, you know, and, um, you know, you, you, you just, you would be forced to leave the building for like a week or two. Um, you know, which was how I, I ended up going to Cabo San Lucas the first time. I had no idea where Cabo San Lucas was or why it would be interesting. Um, and I, I basically got sent there. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. Um, you know, to know when to, when to pull back. Um, cause they're all, you know, you often get in situations where, you know, you really can't pull back for a while. You know, you, you have to sort of figure out when you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So, last one, the same microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being you for here with us. So, my question well, my is question about, about uh, the uh, Google versus Google Oracle versus. lawsuit about uh, using the Java standard API to create Android. How do you think a decision will influence the Java world, whatever decision that will be? Um, it's really hard to say. I, I suspect that the, that the real impact on the Java world will be um, non-existent. I mean, there's a lot of backstory to the um, Oracle Google court case, and um, you know there really are no good actors in this. I mean, the the in the early days of Android, the, the Google folks did some you know, rather unpleasant things. Um, you know, so so I'm there. The, there isn't a good side or a bad side here. It's just it, 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 it's just like crazy. But in terms of the, the impact on everybody, I, I, I suspect it will be almost non-existent. Thank you. Okay, the last one. Yes, yeah, some question just for fun. Which kind of model is your cellular phone? Sorry. Um, could you please repeat? It's, a, it's, a, it's an Android iPhone. Okay. Because yeah. I don't like to fuss with things. It just works. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, James, thank you very much that you are uh, with us today. It's very important for us to celebrate like Java 20 together, like with Father of Java, with Ukrainian community. So thank you for the community that you are uh, keeping Java evolving, uh, that uh, you are pas pas passionate about Java. So thank you again. Thank you, organizers, for this great event. So and thank you, Ruslan, for inviting me. Thank you very much. Yep. James. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's awesome, really. So I was in, in many places and, and met different Java user groups. Java community is so friendly. Like, it's so cool. Um, you know, like... Yeah, I, I can find people to take me out to a bar in any city on the planet. It's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> so thank you again, and for day it's all. Uh, please come tomorrow for the, next, for the second day of Java Day in Kyiv, and let's have fun with Java tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, James. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>